Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiator, and so who watching this channel doesn't know that my main love is military sabre fencing? And um, over the years I get asked a lot, Matt, what do you recommend for a gymnasium sabre, for the, for the practice weapon for the military sabre? And at various times I've had an answer to this question, um, and at various times I haven't. Now the reason for that is that practice swords have gone in and out of production, sometimes production qualities of certain models have been good and sometimes they've been bad. Sometimes designs have been changed, sometimes makers have disappeared. Um, I have worked on two um, Eastern Sabres, so to speak, Matt Eastern Sabres, um, so I've worked with companies in the past. Um, I've worked with um, Peter Reginier and I've worked with uh, the Red Dragon brand um, under the Night Shop or the Hema Shop. Um, and um, Currently, there is no Matt Easton kind of stamp of approval um, sabre uh, to buy for sale. So at the moment, uh, it's a kind of a bit of a no man's land. People say, what sabre do you recommend? And I go, well, these are the options you decide. <laughs> um, now, it has to be said, there are different types of gymnasium sabre that different people will be looking for based on which particular sabre systems they follow. If someone's following Radelli, for example, or perhaps a Masiello, Italian uh, late military sabre, then the type of thing that they might want to use to practice with might be different to someone who's doing, uh, for example, uh, Roworth or Angelo Napoleonic era uh, British um, military sabre, which is a, a curb, well, it's one of those basically, it's an 1803 pattern uh, predominantly. O other types of sword, also the Spadroon, um, but uh, the 1796 like cavalry sabre used on foot, um, so various types of, um, of broadsword and Spadroon um, and sabre used on foot, but um, they're very, very different. Now what I practice is actually kind of in the middle of those two things, okay, so um, I practice fundamentally the uh, British Victorian period um, sword, officer's sword, okay, which is one of these. This was incidentally, I'll do a video just about this sword one day, this was owned by Peter Stark Lumsden, uh, whose brother was the founder of the Corps of Guides, but anyway, um, interesting guy. But the topic of this video is a, I won't say a new maker, because they're not new, but a really interesting, and it might be new to you, maker, who I have to recommend to you highly. Um, they're based in Russia, and they're called Kvetan or Kvetan, depending how you want to pronounce it. Um, my good friend David Rawlings um, over at London Longsword, he's done a review of uh, some of their stuff. I'll also be doing reviews of some of the same stuff as it happens, but um, this is specifically talking about sabres. Now, I was very excited to see, I know that there's a big military sabre scene in Russia, uh, and generally speaking, to get a good practice weapon of a thing, it seems you have to go to the place where it's used a lot because they get the most feedback from the users. Um, and um, indeed, they have come up with a gymnasium saber that is a very, very nice thing. Okay, um, it's 34 inch blade. It's got really good um, distal taper. It's got the distal taper exactly as it should be. It's got great flex. It flexes in the second half of the blade okay as you would want it has a rolled tip they can do flared tips or roll tips i elected for a roll tip it's what i'm most familiar with uh, primarily from reginier weapons in the past um, but it's got a roll tip which is historical um, and um, the blades are absolutely great the are uh, these are a little bit more curved than I'm personally used to, which led to some very amusing um, incidences when I first started fencing with these, uh, whereby I went to thrust someone in the face and missed <laughs> because uh, because my curve was pointing off to the side. So I was in cart, I can't do it in the room here, but I was in cart extending my arm. And if you're the opponent, the blade went off to the side instead of into their face. I've now learned to, you just, all you have to do is you just learn where the point is now and you just readjust it slightly. Um, so it's not a problem, but it takes a bit of getting used to. If you're used to a blade which is straighter and you suddenly switch to a curved blade, your thrusts will probably miss <laughs> or not reach their target. If it's a very curved blade, you'll find you've got less reach with the, uh, with the thrust. But um, yeah, so the blade is absolutely great. This incidentally is a new one. This is actually for one of my club mates that hasn't been given to him yet. So I'm showing this. My personal one is down here and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So this is from the factory, as it were. Um, from um, Alex at Kvitan, and um, it's, it's great, okay? The blade, I have only good things to say about it, okay? Great durability, great flex, 
great lightness in the end of the blade. One of the problems with some of the other uh, gymnasium sabers out there on the market at the moment is they've got a little bit too much meat up in this part of the blade, or at least thickness in this part of the blade, and it can make them feel quite clunky. Even if the point of balance is in the right place, as I've talked about before, inertia doesn't uh, necessarily care about the point of balance. It's about how much mass you've got at the ends of the, of the, of the object, of the lever. And if, if, even if you've got a point of balance which is close to the hand, if you've got a lot of beef up here, if you've got a lot of meat in the blade up here, it will feel bar-like and clunky. But these are lovely, lively blades. They move around quickly like a sharp, real antique sabre does. Um, so blades, absolutely fantastic. Personally, I choose, I would choose, so I deliberately ordered the standard model because I wanted to be able to view the standard model as a benchmark and then decide if I wanted something different from there. Um, and also I wanted to test what was a standard model rather than the custom one. Um, so the blades are a little bit more curved than I would personally choose, but I'm sure some people out there will want even more curved blades. Kavitan can do a blade which is straight or they can do it which is really curved, whatever you like, okay? They can do custom orders as well. And incidentally, they don't only do sabers, they do uh, feathers and side swords and rapiers, anything, okay? They can do custom orders, but they do have standard models. Now, the advantage of that is the standard models give a point of reference, so you can say, I really love your standard model, but I'd like to have a slightly longer blade or a slightly lighter blade or whatever. Um, they give a good frame of reference, but also, of course, the standard models enable them to offer training weapons which are cheaper than custom ones, okay, because they've got standard um, patterns for the guards and the grips and the blades, and they can churn those out, still made to the same top quality, but, of course, because they're using more standardised um, production procedures, they can keep the prices down, and their prices are very competitive. I would say, obviously, shipping from Russia, anybody can order, incidentally, through uh, Facebook. The link to Kvitan is going to be below this video. Um, anybody can order um, from Alex through there, um, and um, it will be shipped out to you, not directly from Russia, so you will be able to get it wherever you are in the world, pretty much. Um, and um, basically, um, they were a joy to deal with, paid through PayPal, shipped to me, no problems at all. There were, there were a few delays due to um, holidays, uh, like national holidays, but apart from that, no problems at all. The things got to me safely, well packed, um, perfect condition, and very, very happy customer here. I ordered about 12, I think it was, 12 or more um, objects for various members of my club. Right, now on to the hilt. So the hilt is a little bit more of a complex topic. Okay, first of all, the construction quality is great. That nut at the top there is, um, is, uh, goes down into the grip slightly, so it's not only what you see at the top, it actually goes down about twice as deep as that, which is a really good idea because that gives uh, obviously a nut rather than, you could have a peened one, okay, you could have, and they make their side swords and their long swords or uh, feathers are peened, but if you have a nut at the end, obviously you can dismount the hilt, replace the guard, repair the guard, repair the grip, change the grip, do whatever you like, okay? So I'm a big fan of nuts on sabers and it is traditional. Um, but the great thing about having the recessed or nut, that, or at least the nut that goes further down, is it gives you a greater number of um, teeth on that thread that that nut is holding onto. So your likelihood of stripping the thread out of the nut is reduced, the uh, problems of it loosening is reduced because you've got a greater amount of friction, basically just all the good things, okay? You can tighten it up more, it will get, in fact, I've never had this mine get loose so far in use. Um, it's great, okay? So nut, really good. We've got two, we could say three other components here, but I'll, I'll call them two components here. So grip, and guard. Now let's talk about the grip briefly. So the grips are wood wrapped in leather. Okay, now I will say um, my particular sabre had a split in the wood, okay, uh, after, after a few weeks of use, um, which is unfortunate, but unfortunately wood is an organic material and sometimes that kind of thing just happens. I fixed it dead easily. I just whacked some Gorilla Glue in there, let it set, put it back on, and it's remained absolutely solid ever since. The leather uh, and of course you could have cord uh, and leather combination or just cord over the top. Anything around a wooden grip is partly there for shock absorption, partly there for grip, but it's also partly to keep the wood together, okay? So the uh, wrapping here, the leather wrapping kept my grip together. It was still a functional sword. I glued the wood back together. It's all absolutely fine again. 
okay um, i'm not personally a massive fan of the shape of the grip but what i would say is the grips are relatively thin and an advantage of starting off with a thin grip is as John Musgrave Waite says in his treatise in 1880, that's a sword I just kicked there, um, you can absolutely um, wrap the grip however you like. So what you, if you find that that shape doesn't really suit you, all you can do is just basically stick on or place on some whatever, some, some sort of, I could do cardboard or you could do um, wood or anything, and then you can wrap over it with like, for example, tennis racket tape or golf club tape, something like this. Um, or leather or cord or whatever you like. Okay, what, what weight suggests is waxed cord because it gives a really good sticky grip. Um, now, one thing I have found, for those of us who like to put your thumb up the back, as I very much do most of the time, um, you will find that these grips are a little bit thin and rounded there and your thumb is does slip a little bit on there, especially when you're wearing big padded gloves. Um, so I would recommend building that out and making that a bit flat, flatter. Okay, now the guard. Let's talk about the guard. So in Russia, um, they favor using very lighter gloves than we tend to use. They wear just leather gloves and they look for greater protection from the hilt. That's one way of doing things. We tend to wear, um, uh, at least in my club, we tend to wear red dragon gloves. Um, I've never had any issues with these whatsoever. I know a few people have had broken fingers, but I have had a broken finger, but I was just wearing thin leather gloves. <laughs> so now I always wear these and I haven't had any problems wearing these. Um, with red dragon gloves, um, however, the hilt is a bit of a problem. Okay, so the reason is you'll notice it's very ball like. It's, it looks a bit like almost like a single stick hilt. Um, and one of the problems is when you make a very enclosed ball grip like this, it does offer more protection to the hand if you had a bare hand or just leather glove. But if you've got a large padded glove on, and I'll just pull this red dragon glove on, I have to just uh, caveat for a second, I couldn't find my normal glove, it's in one of my other kit bags, so this is a brand new one and it's really, it's really stiff, it's like putting cardboard on these red dragon gloves. I do think that they're the best available gloves that we've got for Sabre at the moment, um, but they are really stiff when they're new, but most gloves are, unfortunately. Um, anyway, what you'll find is, the problem is the ball of this grip is actually narrower than the plastic plate across the knuckles. So initially, I had huge amounts of frustration because I had a Sabre that had a lovely blade, had a great weight, um, weighs about 850 grams or 880 grams or maybe if I remember correctly. So perfect weight, perfect length, perfect balance, perfect feeling and everything. And I couldn't hold the saber properly with my gloves. Now I did have a couple of bouts just with thin leather gloves on, which was better, I have to say, but I still had one other issue. Okay, so I'll just take the glove off for a minute. So one issue, there are two, for me, two issues with the guard. One issue was that because it was so ball-like here, it didn't have enough space for the back plate of the glove across there, diagonally across there. But the second problem is if we look at the back of the hilt here, can you see how rounded this shape is? And it's much wider than the grip. So the grip comes up there and the back of the guard is much, much wider. Now, I like to hold a sabre. If I just grab an antique sabre, come here antique sabre, um, I like to hold a sabre like that. Okay, so you'll notice that the back of my hand is right up against in line with the back of that guard. And you'll notice that the back of the guard is as narrow as the pommel. So I can do that, okay? In this case, the back of the guard is wider than the pommel. I'll just put the antique away again. Okay, so because it's wider than the pommel, I can't, I can't put my hand there because the guard's in the way, okay? So one of the first things I did is I cut off, well, I actually ground off with a grinding wheel, a section here, brilliant, okay? I could now hold it correctly because I am essentially made the guard as narrow, or as, yeah, as narrow as the pommel is at the bottom there, so I could hold it the correct way. But I still had, and it helped a bit with the glove problem because it now meant that my hand was now further down the grip, and was moving a bit away from that guard and was giving my hand more space um, to fit in there. Um, but there was still a bit of a problem, that guard was still in the way. So, this is where we got onto my sabre. You'll understand now why I've been showing the standard one. I cut off, again using my grinding wheel, I cut off that much of the side of, of my guard, which is about, in fact I can measure it, I'll tell you how much it is. 
I think it's about five centimeters. It's not as much as three centimeters, okay? Um, although I'd removed a bit by that point already, so it's probably closer to four centimeters that I removed, because um, I removed a centimeter and that didn't make much difference, so then I've just removed a whopping great three centimeters. And the result, I'm extremely happy with, okay? So the result now is an easternized, <laughs> I've just created a word, an easternized Kvitsen Sabre, okay? Now you'll notice that this, I have only done it on one side of the guard. So here you can see, I've grant, and yes, my sword, I've been using it a lot, okay? So it's got scratches and battered. And you'll also notice the guard is dark colored, that's because I blued it. I just love bluing things. Um, and yeah, I blued it and it's got scratched up since, as, as they do. Um, but you'll notice that I have removed the, I've ground away the guard on that side and then I've cut away a big section here. The result now is I can now hold the sabre how I want and I can fit a red dragon glove comfortably. Whoa, there goes my light. Um, I can now fit the uh, red dragon glove comfortably into the um, the opening essentially at the side. So all's good um, and you can hopefully also see the difference between that's the original side and that's the new Matt Easton side. Um, that's the original pommel, uh, sorry that's the corrected pommel side and that's the original flared. You'll notice because of course I'm right-handed predominantly, although I write left-handed bizarrely, um, I only needed to remove it on one side. So technically you could leave all of the original protection on that side. So if you've got one of these Kvitan sabers and you're having problems with your red dragon gloves, that's my solution. Now, with these changes made, with these Matt Easton changes made, this is a freaking lovely um, sabre and I can do nothing but recommend it. It has been durable, it's not taken any bends, it flexes well, it's light at the tip, it moves beautifully, um, it's, it's just lovely. I have one thing left to change on my personal sabre here and that's to very slightly change the shape of this grip, okay? Um, and I'm actually gonna essentially fill in that gap. You can see it kind of goes up there. I'm gonna fill in this bit here and wrap tennis wrap around it, but I'm also gonna put a little um, rectangular section up here for my thumb because as mentioned, I find my thumb slipping off a bit. It's it's not a problem with bare hands, but as soon as I put a red dragon glove on, it makes the thumb kind of big and slippy. So I need to put a flat section up here for my thumb, and I need to just change the shape of the grip very slightly there by wrapping over it. Um, but fundamentally, I love it. Now, you may be thinking, I really want to get one of these Kvitan Sabres now, but, um, but I don't know how to, or I can't be bothered, or I don't have the tools to make all the changes that Matt's made. Well, that's where your problems stop uh, because I've been talking to Alex at Kvitin this morning and uh, they are gonna be offering the Sabre with these changes already made to it. So in essence, what they're offering is they're offering the original unadulterated standard Sabre for people who want to use thin leather gloves and have more protection from the bowl. And then they're gonna offer the cut down guard for people who want to wear something like red dragon gloves or an equivalent and um, and get protection from the glove rather than relying on it from the guard. So there you go. Um, it, it's a wonderful saber, okay? And I can only I can only recommend that if you're looking for a new gymnasium saber, or you just don't like the one that you've got, uh, or you're looking to get your first, absolutely consider Kavitan. Link below and. If you're, certainly if you're, I would say, attending most of the events in, um, in the UK or perhaps in America or France, you're going to be required to wear something equivalent to Red Dragon gloves, probably, okay? So in that case, ask for the cut down guard so that you make sure you can fit, comfortably fit those gloves into the hilt. And once the guard's cut down, this is a wonderful, wonderful saber. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, one final parting thing I'll say is indeed, I am um, talking to Kvitin at the moment, talking to Alex, um, and we will have other news, hopefully, in the future, um, in, in a few months' time. Um, but, um, but yeah, for now, if you want sabres, go to Kvitin. They are absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, the best sabres out there um, to get right now. Cheers, folks.